Welcome to Higher Ed and Hospitals, Giving Tuesdays for You Too. I'm Allison Albert, your host. I am the Membership Marketing Director with the Maryland Association of Nonprofit Organizations. I'm also the Campaign Coordinator for the Maryland Gives More Campaign here in Maryland. Uh, today's webinar is coming to you courtesy of the Maryland Gives More Campaign and sponsored by Giving Tuesday. So, uh, before we get started, I'd like to share a couple of things about Maryland Gives More and today's webinar, and I'll introduce our presenters. Um, in the meantime, to eliminate background noise, please go ahead and press star six on your phone to mute your line. Star six, great. Thanks, everybody. Um, really quick, I know we have participants from all over the country, but I want to briefly mention to those of you that are here in Maryland, that the Maryland Gives More campaign is Maryland's campaign for Giving Tuesday. Our goal is to declare Maryland the most generous state in the country on Giving Tuesday 2015. To accomplish that, we're giving you free campaign planning resources. Um, in return, we ask only that you visit MarylandGivesMore.com, sign up as a campaign participant, and that you return on December 1st to report in your donations throughout the day. For those of you outside of Maryland, check with our presenter, Jamie McDonald, or the folks at Giving Tuesday National to see if there's a similar effort in your city or state. Again, that website is MarylandGivesMore.com. Regarding the webinar, we will be sharing a copy of today's presentation in a follow-up email. Look for that uh, later this evening. We'll also be recording the webinar, and it will be available both on uh, GivingTuesday.org and MarylandGivesMore.com later this week. Um, again, to eliminate background noise, uh, please press star 6 to mute your line so that we can't hear you working in the background during the presentation. Um, if you have questions during the presentation, please submit them in the chat window and we will answer them in a facilitated Q&A at the end of the presentation if there's time. Um, finally, we will be sharing some video content during today's presentation, so make sure that you have your computer speakers turned on and uh, at a comfortable hearing volume so that you can hear that content. Uh, last but not least, I'm thrilled to say that you and uh, about 100 of your peers from across the country are in attendance today, so I'm certain that the result of this year's Giving Tuesday campaign will be um, awesome, <laughs> more awesome than last year. Uh, so without further ado, I am pleased to introduce our speakers. Um, speaking first will be Jamie McDonald. She's the president of Generosity, Inc. Jamie's mission is to spur people to give, act, and innovate on behalf of communities, causes, and schools. After 16 years as an investment banker, Jamie shifted her personal mission to inno innovation and growth of the generosity economy. In addition to working with hundreds of nonprofits on their individual fundraising, in 2013, Jamie led the Be More, Gives More campaign, uh, the Giving Tuesday movement that raised $5.7 million in a single day and earned Baltimore the most generous city in America honor. In 2014, she served as the lead advisor to Maryland nonprofits, Maryland Gives More campaign that raised $9.2 million, as well as leading Network for Good's record-breaking Giving Tuesday campaign which engaged nearly 4,000 nonprofits in a day of generosity, tallying more than $4 million. So needless to say, she's a generosity expert, and we're very lucky to have her here with us today. Jamie, would you say a quick hello to the group? Hi, everybody. Glad to be with you today. Great. Um, also on the line, we have Linda Douglas. She's the Senior Director for Marketing and Annual Giving in the Office of University Development at the University of Michigan. Linda joined the University of Michigan in December 2013, leading a team of marketing professionals in developing and launching strategies to inspire and celebrate giving to the university. She oversees the marketing strategy, creative, online, and production teams, as well as collaborating with schools, colleges, and units in creating successful marketing and communications programs targeted to donors and potential donors. Prior to joining UM, Linda held marketing leadership positions in the financial services, automotive finance, and retail and real estate industries. She holds a business degree from Central Michigan University and hails from a family with four generations of UM alums. 
the University of Michigan's 2014 Giving Tuesday campaign has become one of those iconic campaigns that we can all learn and take away from. So I feel very lucky that we have Linda on the line with us today. Linda, do you say a quick hello? Hello, everyone. All right, wonderful. Jamie, are you ready to take it away? Yep. All right, control to your... Thank Thanks, Allison. Uh, jump in if there's any problem hearing me. Um, very excited to be with all of you from um, what looks like primarily higher ed institutions, but uh, hopefully a handful of hospitals around the country as well. Um, it's Giving Tuesday has really become um, an exciting day on the giving calendar for organizations large and small, and and it's been you know my great honor to have been involved with Giving Tuesday from the beginning as, as just somebody that, that really immediately bought into the, the, the purpose of the movement and has so admired the leadership team at the 92nd Street Y in New York, who has basically brought the gift of Giving Tuesday at the world, to the world through their efforts. Um, in addition to the work that I did that Allison mentioned on, um, on the, the campaigns that she cited, I am also working hand-in-hand -hand with the 92nd Street Y as the leader of their civic campaigns initiative this year and, um, and trying to support um, cities and states and, and counties around the country in um, making the most of their Giving Tuesday campaigns. And in that work, um, I've had the, the, the good fortune to interact with many in, in their communities who are in the higher ed and hospital arena as some of often the largest nonprofits uh, that exist in, in communities around the country. Um, one other housekeeping note, I do see some people are still coming onto the phone. If you don't mind hitting star six and muting your phone, that would be terrific, just so we don't have background noise. Um, thank you so much. And um, I will say that for those of you from the hospital world, much of this webinar is framed in the context of um, of higher ed, and that but that is only because we have you know the, the the colleges and universities have really jumped into Giving Tuesday with both feet. So we have a lot of really powerful examples, um, but I will try to draw the parallels as we go through to ways that hospitals can you know can take away the same lessons that we've seen in the higher ed community even though many of them are just really considering how to put their toe in the water this year as it relates to Giving Tuesday. And then we're so fortunate that we'll have Linda uh, be able to share with us the amazing, amazing um, University of Michigan Giving Blue Day campaign from last year, um, and then we'll have lots of time for questions at the end. So um, just to kick things off, um, you know, Giving Tuesday is really sort of taking that concept of crowdfunding and turning it into a movement. And crowdfunding is something that is really being um, adopted by organizations of all types, including uh, higher ed and hospitals around the country. But it's really based on a, a, a long-believed um, historical framework, which is that people want to join together to support causes that are going to make a difference. You know, when you look back at the history, this is, you know, taking care of feeding people in your own community. But today our communities are both physical and virtual. And, um, and what has happened with our Giving Tuesday movement is that it has really created a phenomenon where we can all join together and be part of a global day of giving um, that is building on this sort of belief that crowdfunding is a way for us to all come together to do more good together. And crowdfunding is really taking off in higher ed, again, a little slower in the hospital context, but we are beginning to see some hospital campaigns around the country, both tied to Giving Tuesday, but also tied to... Um, we, don't have, we don't have any, Woody. No. Um, just a reminder to everyone to please mute your phones. Thank you so much. Um, one of the most exciting innovations that has arisen in crowdfunding is Giving Days. And Giving Tuesday is the, really, I think, the, the sort of the one that has really captured the imagination of citizens from around the world. Um, for those of you who, uh, who may not know, you know, Giving Tuesday, which is going to um, have its, its fourth 
Day on December 1st of this year is actually a movement that was hatched just three years ago. Um, you know, it's fourth year, but three year anniversary. And it has grown from being a couple hundred organizations in year one to this year um, a movement that is taking place in countries literally around the world, hundreds of thousands of nonprofits and, and NGOs, and what we anticipate will be millions of donors will be part of this day. So your constituents, um, hospitals and colleges and universities, your constituents will be hearing about Giving Tuesday everywhere. And what we hope we can um, inspire you and perhaps provide you with some tools to think about today is how you make sure you're in that conversation and that you're one of the causes that people are thinking about on Giving Tuesday. So one of the things that we think is really important is that you know, the fundamentals for raising money on things like a Giving Day haven't really changed. Um, this is really about, you know, rallying your passionate community um, in colleges, you know, students, alumni, parents, faculty, staff, in hospitals. Um, this is often grateful patients. It's your doctors. It's families who've had um, loved ones in your hospital. It's, 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 the, it's the community of connected constituents who can help to spread the message about the impact of your work. But what's terrific is with movements like Giving Tuesday, we really have the power to move the needle in a much more aggressive way um, and to help more people both learn about the impact of your work and, and hopefully raise their hands to participate. And so when you tie together Giving Tuesday, social media, and a great campaign, you really are creating a giving party for your organization. And that, it's that notion of um, fun and engagement and you know, bringing your whole community together to do something that, that, that we can enjoy as a group, that's what Giving Tuesday is really all about. So why, why do Giving Days and Giving Tuesday in particular work? Um, obviously, you know, first and foremost is that it's an opportunity to build capacity and support for your mission. Um, it's an amazing opportunity to tell a story. Um, and you know, in large institutions like yours, that, it may be hard to pick a couple of stories, but you know, it's worth thinking about what are those one or two iconic stories that can be the, the core um, communications centers of your campaign, um, while you then surround them with other stories that exemplify um, sort of the work that is going to be funded by virtue of people supporting your campaign. Um, one of the most exciting things, and I'm sure Linda will, will reiterate this as well, is that a Giving Tuesday campaign is fun. I mean, when you, when you get your whole team involved and you've got everybody sitting in that room on Giving Tuesday watching the dollars flow in and, um, and the movement and progress toward your goal, it, it literally feels like you're at a sporting event. And it's, it, it will become, I've, I've experienced this time and time again with nonprofits that have been involved in Giving Tuesday, that people will say that was the most exciting day of the year for our team. Um, you know, next in the top right is it's a real chance to arm the people that are already passionate about your work with a reason to go out and inspire others to come to the table. Um, you know, the megaphone is really symbolic of the fact that Giving Tuesday in and of itself has become a movement that has a voice and it has a reach and scope that, um, that none of us who were involved in the beginning ever would have predicted. But your organization wants to be in that conversation because it will be a big part of the news cycle on December 1st. And then finally, Giving Tuesday is an incredible opportunity to launch your year-end giving season with an exciting opportunity for people to learn, advocate, and participate in your mission. And if you construct your campaign the right way, you can actually carry that Giving Tuesday campaign all the way through to the December 31 year-end period. One of the things that has come out of the research around Giving Days that I think is important to um, to have people keep in mind is that, you know, some people are, are, feel like these are only for small givers, and the reality is that you're right that a lot of a lot of people use days like Giving Days as an entry point to giving to your organization, but 
the reality of those those sort of people that come in through this entry point is that this could be, be the beginning of a relationship that could be a sustaining level relationship to your institution over time if you take advantage of the opportunities to cultivate and steward the donors that come in through a day like a Giving Tuesday. And my favorite example is right here in my hometown of Baltimore, which is that Michael Bloomberg, who was a, went to Johns Hopkins, made his first gift to Johns Hopkins of $5 um, back after he graduated. And as of last year, Michael Bloomberg has given $1.3 billion to Johns Hopkins since that time. And one of the things in an article that we read is that you know, he felt appreciated for that $5 gift. And, um, and who would have known at the time, you know, they, they, these, these four people were all people in his class, who would have known at the time that, that, that he was going to be the one that would become the guy who could give $1.3 billion and be such a critical funder of the institution in the long run. So perhaps each of you in your Giving Tuesday campaign this year will be uncovering your Michael Bloomberg. So what are a couple of key elements of successful Giving Tuesday campaigns? Um, the first is to set a, set a big goal. Um, Giving Tuesday is an opportunity for you to think about how you accomplish um, a strategic objective for your hospital or for your college or university. And that goal may be about dollars, um, but that goal may also be about other things like number of donors, number of new donors, perhaps young alumni, recurring givers or sustainer givers, um, or even a participation goal by class um, or overall. You know, the opportunity is to set a goal that is ambitious enough that people will rally around it and feel like they're motivated to want to help you reach it. Um, you know, a question we always get is, well, what if we don't hit our goal? And of course, that's always a risk when you're ambitious. But what we've seen time and time again is that it's better to set an ambitious goal and miss it and but feel good that you really stretch to do something big than to set a small goal and have people sort of say ho-hum when you achieve it. So you clearly want to feel like it's in the realm of possibility to reach it, but, um, but, but be ambitious enough that it can be a real rallying cry for your team. And the team is so important. You know, it's difficult to have a great campaign without a team captain. And so, um, you know, think about who on your team is the right person to lead a Giving Tuesday campaign. It's going to be different in different organizations. You know, sometimes it's going to be somebody in development or advancement. Sometimes it may be somebody who's in marketing. You know, Linda will probably have some perspective on that from, from her experience as well. Um, what I would say is that it is typically more about passion and, and enthusiasm and commitment than it is about you know, skill and experience because these days are still so new on everybody's giving calendar. And so, you know, so think about that person that can really rally people around this concept of a great new kind of giving and, and give them the authority to kind of run with achieving your big goal. The next key opportunity is to brand your campaign. You know, one of the things that is so important is that you have an identity to your campaign that separates it from your everyday giving. Um, so here's a whole bunch of different uh, college campaigns that, that, that created a distinct identity for Giving Tuesday. This really allows people to visually relate to um, everything they're seeing that's tied to the Giving Tuesday campaign and separate that from um, the other communications that they may be receiving from your school or your hospital. Um, the next opportunity is really to think about, you know, who are those key supporters? And these can be staff members, these can be alumni, these can be faculty or staff um, who, are, who can be the, the sort of the ambassadors for your campaign. Um, you can identify them in a whole bunch of ways. Some of them are going to be known to you just because of the role that you play in your institution. But you may also want to do um, some social media research to figure out who are the people that are constantly retweeting you, who are the people that are constantly posting or responding to your posts on social media, and reach out to them directly and encourage them to get involved in your campaign. because. You can't put a price on people that already bring passion to, the, to this effort. 
and they will then be the places where you can amplify your message out to a broader constituency. You also want to really think about how to involve your team and in some cases your lead donors. You know, can you bring people to the Giving Tuesday table um, to really expand the scope and reach of your campaign? Um, and there's all kinds of ways for um, you know, advisors and board members and others to get involved. They can provide challenges. They can provide matching funds. Perhaps you have um, skill-based sharing that people can do. If you've got a communications department, perhaps you can involve your, you know, some of your communications professors in building the, the communication strategy for the campaign. Um, you may have people that want to do personal fundraisers on your behalf for Giving Tuesday. You know, we've already talked about social media ambassadors. Planning goal setting events, these are all ways that you can engage people in Giving Tuesday, make it fun, you know, build a bigger team to sort of rally around this big goal that you'll have set for yourself. And then think hard about how to really arm them with the information that is going to make your campaign a success. So we really recommend that you create a consistent strategy for sharing content that people can just cut and paste and send out. And my, my best practice recommendation is that you pick a day or perhaps two days a week, maybe it's Tuesdays and Fridays, and you let your key ambassadors in each one of these groups on the right know that every Tuesday or perhaps every Tuesday and Friday at 3 o'clock we are going to be sending you some shareable content, and we hope you will take 15 or 20 minutes and put this out to your networks. When you set that kind of expectation for people, and then you follow through and you consistently communicate, then they feel like it's something that they can anticipate and get excited about because it's coming again this week. Whereas if you just send things constantly without any plan or purpose, you're much more likely to see people lose their enthusiasm or potentially not be willing to share because they feel like there's too much of a demand on their time. The next key opportunity is really to take advantage of every chance you can to make it fun. Um, and I'm not going to say too much about this because you're going to get to hear firsthand from an expert, um, from Linda, about some of the fun things that they did at the University of Michigan in their campaign. But keep that top of mind. Fun is really going to make the difference between a successful and an unsuccessful campaign. And, um, and these are a couple of the key ways to do that. Um, Create a great campaign. Again, I'm not going to spend any time here because you're going to get to hear about it firsthand. But if you're struggling for campaign ideas, here are all kinds of different things that you could think about to create a, a tangible, um, clear campaign, particularly those of you that just want to put your toe in the water this year. Um, you know, not, not everyone could or should attempt a campaign at the scale that, that the University of Michigan did, um, but everyone can do some kind of Giving Tuesday campaign. And so I've put on this page um, a whole bunch of different kinds of campaigns that have taken place for Giving Tuesday among different colleges um, and other large organizations, and, um, and would be happy to answer more of these in detail um, in the Q&A if you're interested. And, um, and then, of course, we'd love to hear any additional ideas when we're in the chat session at the end about other things that you may be thinking about because this is an opportunity for us to all learn from each other. A question we always get asked is, when should I get started? And whether I'm answering this question in you know, March or in September or in November, the time to get started is now. Um, you know, there's, there's so much you can do even with a short amount of time. Clearly, the more time you have, the more planning you can do. But don't feel like it's too late to get a great campaign off the ground for this year. You definitely can do that. I'd encourage you to, again, pick one of those campaign ideas from the prior slide and think about how to just get yourself going on Giving Tuesday and, um, and then you know, take, take advantage of the resources that are out there from people like me and GivingTuesday.org and others um, to learn as much as you can and create as much efficiency for your team as you can to make Giving Tuesday a success for you. And then finally, is Giving Tuesday right for you? Um, when I get this question, I always sort of say you know, two things in response. Um, do you have the time, the team, and the resources to participate? And can you afford not to? 
Um, can you afford not to be in the conversation on December 1st when givers all around the country and all around the world are looking for that cause that they can get excited about supporting and you want to be in that conversation? So with that, we're so excited to um, present a case study on Giving Blue Day, the University of Michigan's blockbuster campaign, and to have um, the, the brains behind it on the phone with us, um, Linda Douglas. Thank you so much for joining us and sharing your experiences at Michigan. Hello, everyone. Well, first of all, I think that there's a lot of brains behind Giving Blue Day, so I, I can't take credit for that. Um, it really was a huge team effort all across the university. Um, but I'm very excited to be able to share with you um, an overview of what we did last year. First of all, just a little bit of history. For those who don't know, the University of Michigan is almost 200 years old. We have a very decentralized fundraising environment with 27 different schools, universities, and fundraising units and three different campuses that are actually part of the University of Michigan. We have more than 58,000 current students, more than 500,000 alumni, and more than 40,000 faculty and staff. In November of 2013, we publicly launched our current major fundraising campaign, which is called Victors for Michigan. And this campaign has a $4 billion goal over the course of about five years. So we're in the midst of a major campaign. And as, in terms of crowdfunding, the university had done a little bit of dabbling in crowdfunding efforts prior to last year, but they were a variety of smaller ad hoc efforts and requests coming from different units. The Office of Development supports units throughout in terms of what they want to do from a fundraising perspective. And when we were um, reaching 2014, the volume and the number of requests for support for crowdfunding campaigns was continuing to escalate. So we were constantly struggling with the questions of how we could pilot crowdfunding, how we could sustain the momentum of our Victors for Michigan campaign, how we could attract and improve donor rates. And another component of Giving Blue Day, which I'll talk a bit about, is student philanthropy, involving students in beginning to give and understand the future of um, becoming a donor for the university. So we were kind of looking for an answer to these four questions at the same time, and ultimately determined that the ideal answer was to capitalize on Giving Tuesday. Uh, when the decision was made, we were, uh, we were probably six to eight months out, to conduct a single university-wide day of giving. We felt instead of supporting ad hoc efforts across the university, we would leverage and um, take all of that energy and momentum towards a single giving day. And it would give us a chance to apply our resources at scale and have a donor-centric approach of going out and asking our donors to support anywhere in the university that they were passionate about on a single day. We really felt that Giving Tuesday presented a terrific opportunity to partner with the national media groundswell focusing on philanthropy. And that would reduce our overall out-of-pocket spend by taking advantage of the fact that there was national attention. And while it was modest, we'd already tied in Tuesday in 2012 and 2013 at a smaller scale. So we felt that it really presented the perfect opportunity. So once the decision was made to take advantage of Giving Tuesday, we started discussing how we wanted to brand our participation and really felt that it was important to keep the University of Michigan brand integrated as much as possible. So rather than calling our day of giving Giving Tuesday, we came up with the term Giving Blue Day and decided to really focus on the Giving Blue Day brand, which really leveraged the pride and loyalty to the University of Michigan um, as the primary message, but we also used Giving Tuesday messaging in everything that we did. Now, once we decided to participate in Giving Tuesday, what came next? Really, I think the key message, and for anyone who's at a large university, it takes a village. It took participation not only throughout the development office, but throughout the entire university. Um, in order to um, marshal all of our resources and put Giving Blue Day together, we had a project manager 
who was within the marketing team here, um, the Associate Marketing Director for Online Engagement. We also initially started by creating a crowdfunding task force where we had representation from throughout the university. Um, representatives from all of our larger schools were part of that, as well as representatives from sc smaller schools who had already expressed an interest in crowdfunding. We had a core team from within the Office of Development that really did most of the heavy lifting centrally in terms of the technology and marketing requirements. And we really worked to build consensus. We did presentations at a number of different sessions. We have a monthly development council meeting for the entire development community. There are quarterly communicators forum meetings for communicators within the schools, college, and units. We have annual giving meetings, uh, chief development officer meetings. So there was a number of different opportunities for us to get in front of groups across campus to really educate them. Being this, you know, our first go round with Giving Blue Day, there was a lot of educating and consensus building going on. And then really our next task was to determine what success would look like. What were we looking to accomplish? In our case, we set a goal of raising $1 million in 24 hours, reaching 1,000 donors, generating at least 1 million media impressions for Giving Blue Day, which also would be additional media focus for the Victors for Michigan campaign. And then in addition to that, we really wanted to build our IQ around supporting crowdfunding because we knew that aside from Giving Blue Day moving forward into 2015, we were going to continue to need to look at how to support crowdfunding outside a single Giving Day. So we actually made the decision to do the bulk of the work for giving Blue Day internally to the university rather than outsourcing it. So the vast majority of the efforts were handled internally. And then really in looking what, were the, what was the infrastructure essential to support giving Blue Day, we had recently launched a new online giving portal, which was really a key piece of that. And then in addition to that, we created a dedicated website. And that website went live with some basically save the date type of content leading up to Giving Blue Day. We had different iterations which were coming soon, um, the day of and then the day after. And key elements on our Giving Blue Day site were a video, social feeds, um, counters on the day of for the number of donors, the number of dollars. Um, prior to Giving Blue Day, we had a countdown and a call to action. So prior to Giving Blue Day itself, the call to action was to mark your calendar, watch the video to help share the message, and then on the day of, it was give. So what you see on your screens now is early on the day of where we were actually starting to count up the number of donors and dollars, and we had our Give Now button active. And this was also um, mobile optimized, so it could be viewed on a phone, on a laptop, on a tablet, any device. A real key part to Giving Blue Day as well was the fact that because we are so decentralized, we needed to be able to support all of our schools and unit partners in sending out a collaborative message. So we provided a toolkit which included postcard templates, poster templates, ads for journals and magazines being produced throughout the university, and sample social media posts with both text, images, and animation. And I think what you know, we really felt that consistency was key. So you see some of the different examples here in terms of how our marketing was applied across the university. We really used the mantra, it's a great day to be a victor for Michigan, which really tied into our campaign. And we were able to provide editable templates so that the units throughout the university tweaked those for their own specific messaging. We partnered with Central, the Central University um, marketing, digital, and social groups as well. So for about a week leading up to Giving Blue Day, we took over the home page of the University of Michigan website. And then on the day of, we actually had a direct call to action to give from the home page of that site. Another key component in getting the message out was creating a compelling video. So I wanted to, to play for you our call to action video, which really tied together Victors for Michigan campaign messaging and Giving Blue Day. This is our world, and what becomes of it is up to us. Right now, our world needs energy, art, breakthroughs, 
Our world needs victors. When you support the University of Michigan, you transform lives and empower us to address the world's biggest challenges. And in that, you are a victor. Be a victor for Michigan on Tuesday, December 2nd at Giving Blue Day. So that was our call to action video that we actively started sharing in October. Obviously, there were a number of different communication components that we used for Giving Blue Day as well. Through central development, our role was really to generate overall awareness of Giving Blue Day, and then the individual units throughout the university were um, talking about their specific funds and causes. So we sent out a university-wide email series that began a week before Giving Blue Day. We sent an email series to more than 400,000 people, and there were five emails prior, or there were five, three emails prior to Giving Blue Day, two on Giving Blue Day itself, and then a thank you video that went out the day after. This went to major donors as well as annual donors because we really wanted to encourage, you know, we really wanted to promote loyalty to the university, and we had a lot of you know, larger donors that did support Giving Blue Day. Oh, sorry about that. There we go. A little technical glitch. <laughs> sorry. Um, we did print and posters throughout the university. We did banners, and we, um, Jamie had talked a little bit about leveraging your ambassadors or your loyal followers. To coincide with Giving Blue Day, we launched an online ambassador program in early November of last year. We had built a list of our most um, active followers on Twitter and reached out to them last summer to encourage them to become an ambassador for the university. And then when we went live with our ambassador program in November, we reached out to them again and encouraged them to join the program. This program is sponsored um, by the university in partnership with a company called Social Toaster. So we actively leveraged this channel to send out communications regarding Giving Blue Day and asked our ambassadors to share. By Giving Blue Day, we had close to 400 ambassadors that were actually actively sharing our messaging and our videos. In addition to our ambassadors, we made sure that we were launching a lot of different social media content, both through development here and then giving tools to the units across campus. Um, anyone who went to University of Michigan or spent any time here might know that we're kind of famous for squirrels. So that was one of our popular posts was the squirrel. Um, Big Bird is actually dressed for Giving Blue Day, and that's in our children's hospital, actually. Social media challenges played a really key part in Giving Blue Day. Most of our challenges were really about generating social media uh, buzz, more so than really doing challenges between areas of the university. We had challenges, I believe, 11 hourly challenges. So we did not have one every hour, but they had different types of social challenges. As you see here, one example is one of the times when we did say, um, tweet which area of the university should receive an extra thousand dollars and why, and we randomly drew a winner. We also, as you see, did things like share pictures of your babies or pets in Michigan gear. We had people post a vine singing uh, the victors. We really tried to have fun with that and generate content that could easily be shared to help generate additional coverage for Giving Blue Day. Generating a buzz. Uh, this was our new president of the university who came on board last fall, so he used his social media presence to, to help generate awareness. And we reached out to local media throughout southeastern Michigan to help spread the word as well. And you'll see their coverage that we generated by some of the major publications in southeastern Michigan. This is an on-campus publication that goes to faculty and staff. 
And so with all these communications plans, what other pieces did we need to make sure that you consider? Um, one of the interesting things that came out of Giving Blue Day was that we really hadn't done, um, had a significant focus on risk management. And we really spent time focusing on what possible risks could we run into on Giving Blue Day. Putting so much time and energy towards a single day, we wanted to make sure that we planned around anything that may derail our efforts. So we looked at what would happen if our systems went down, if our online giving engine went down. We even looked at what would happen if there were some type of negative press going on. And we really were prepared to deal with anything if something should happen that would um, cause us to consider postponing Giving Blue Day. We also held a dry run about three weeks before Giving Blue Day to make sure that things worked accordingly that when it hit midnight on Giving Blue Day, our system would roll over, we'd start counting gifts, and everything would go as expected. So after running through a risk plan and practicing, it was Giving Blue Day. <laughs> um, war Room. Yes, we had a war room up and running for more than 24 hours. Thankfully, we didn't have any one person here 24 hours. We did take shifts. But the marketing and annual giving team, as well as our technology team here from development, staffed that war room. And then we also had people working remotely. In the upper right-hand image, you see a face on a TV. We use um, a web conferencing system called Blue Jeans, and we had that open throughout the 24 hours so anyone could call in. We had hotlines for all the schools, colleges, and units, as well as an email hotline open for any questions that they wanted to send in to us. Other activities that happened in the war room were you know, social posts, drawing the winners for all of our challenges, answering questions, chatting live online with any donors. We also had student events on campus. We worked really closely with our student philanthropy team to come up with efforts that would engage students in the day of giving. These two locations on campus had special promotions where students could write down a cause where they would like to give $250 to that cause. And we randomly drew four winners, and each of those students were able to award $250 to the cause of their choice. You may see a couple familiar faces there. That's Meryl Davis and Charlie White, the gold medal winning ice dancers. And Meryl went on to win uh, Dancing with the Stars. They're actually U of M students, so they came out and did high fives with the students. Keeping the excitement going throughout the day, making sure that there's a constant stream of social activity between our challenges and we had other things that we posted. This is a post. We had reached out to celebrities who were graduates of the university or supporters. This is from Barrett Foa, who stars on um, CIS. We were trending on Twitter in Metro Detroit throughout the day. And we actually received midday coverage as well from M Live and some of the local media when we hit our million dollar goal in the middle of the day. This is another challenge that we did to again try to generate additional social media activity. So we had the I Gave Blue Did You challenge. Within our online giving portal, if someone makes a gift and chooses to share it using their social channels, we had anything that was posted to Twitter was automatically tagged with I gave blue, did you? And we encouraged them to, in addition, um, tag their friends on that post. And so throughout the day, we were seeing these posts come through, which actually gave us an opportunity to do real-time stewardship. So our team working in the war room would tweet back to anyone who used the social sharing mechanism so that, again, continued to multiply the amount of social media coverage that happened on Giving Blue Day. And so once we hit midnight, the totals, on, the totals for Giving Blue Day, we raised 3.2 million with 5,400 donors. And I'll share a little bit more in just a minute. You know, I think I'm going to skip through this. This was our thank you video but I want to make sure we get to the rest of the content at the end and give you some time for questions. But we did send out on the day following Giving Blue Day a thank you video to the entire audience of 400,000, so donors as well as our other supporters. 
letting them know, you know, what had happened on Giving Blue Day? And then we also really did outreach to local media after Giving Blue Day as well and got additional coverage in the Detroit Free Press, the Michigan Daily. And here's a synopsis. So when all was said and done, we wanted to look at how we had, what goals we accomplished versus what we had set out to do. So our objective of raising $1 million in 24 hours, we raised $3.25 million, which was more than 200 above our goal. Shooting for 1,000 donors, we ultimately had 5,400 donors, as I mentioned previously. Campaign impression, we had 21.5 million impressions. Um, about half of those were on social media. The others were through some of the different media outlets I shared with you. Plus, we had more than 1,600 student donors, which compared to the number of donors that we had in the whole fiscal year previous was almost double the number of student donors on a single day. And another really, really good reason to focus on a giving day, we actually had more than 2,500 first-time donors to the university more donors than we had had in any month in fiscal year 14. So that was by far the largest count of any annual giving appeal. Real quickly, one of the other things, we really were able to elevate the IQ throughout our entire team. It was the first time that we had done an ant scale crowdfunding program, used a scoreboard, launched an ambassador program, created an add to calendar widget, the first time we actually ask students to give to the university, engaging student organizations. It was the first time we did an actual formal online media buy. The social sharing challenge, um, all those things were new to the university. Six months later, we sent a follow-up stewardship email to everyone who had donated on Giving Blue Day, sharing with them the results, trying to you know, make sure to continue engaging them. Just a couple other things that we were really pleased. Um, Giving Blue Day was actually recognized with the Staff Innovation Award throughout the University of Michigan. And the task force that planned Giving Blue Day was awarded in a ceremony with the president of the university. And we also were very honored to receive awards from CASE for Giving Blue Day. And with that, I'm going to turn it back so that we can answer some questions. Actually, I have a couple of quick slides that I'll continue to go through here. And I think you'll get my contact information. Feel free to reach out if you have other questions. Great. Linda, thanks so much. This is Allison again. Um, so we've gotten a couple of questions through our chat window that I think uh, between you and Jamie, you're extremely prepared to respond to. Um, the first question was, is it too soon to start sending emails to your constituency about Giving Tuesday? I would, my opinion, I would hold off a bit, depending on what else you have going on. We talk extensively about that here at the university. And we chose not to actively start communicating in terms of any outbound communications until about a month prior because there were ongoing annual giving solicitations going out to our donors throughout the fall. And we didn't want to um, disrupt typical annual giving patterns. We really wanted to look for incremental giving to the university. Yeah, and I would, I would add to that that um, I think that, that even if you're not in competition necessarily with other ongoing annual appeals, um, you know, for, for organizations perhaps that are smaller, that that this is the time of year when the outbound communication I think should be to recruit those potentially, you know, passionate ambassadors that can be helping to spread the word and amplify your messaging, um, and and less about you know, about getting too much in front of the fundraising curve, because I think you don't want that ask fatigue to set in before Giving Tuesday actually gets here. Um, now, with that said, I, I have seen a couple of very creative campaigns. This wasn't hospitals or higher ed, but I think that this really is a universal opportunity that did some creative, you know, drip excitement building. 
starting about two months out, um, which would be you know around October first. Um, so, so clearly, it's 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 going to be a very individual question depending on what the nature of your outreach is. Um, so, if you've got something super creative that you're thinking about doing, and and you can use a period of time to begin to build excitement before a big announcement of the campaign, that may make some sense. Um, but I would say generally this month of September and perhaps even the early part of October is really much more about you know kind of putting all the building blocks in place to have a great campaign on Giving Tuesday. Great. Thanks, Jamie. Um, we got a question about uh, translating this, you know, b giving Blue Day to, um, to a hospital's experience. Can you maybe tease out some of the strategies that you use that could easily transfer to a hospital's campaign or maybe talk about some other um, uh, other institutions that you've worked with across the country that are doing creative things? Well, on behalf of uh, Michigan, I will say the University of Michigan Health System actively participated in giving Blue Day last year. So much of what we did centrally, they were also participating in at the hospital. They used our toolkit to promote giving Blue Day in their newsletters, um, on their social channels. They, I think one of the images I showed on social, they had Big Bird dressed in a Giving Blue Day t-shirt in, in the children's hospital. I don't think they did much actually physically in the hospital itself. It was more about outreach to donors and grateful patients. And I, I, my observation would be that I think, you know, as Linda said, I think most of what uh, we've talked about today applies to hospitals, higher ed, or frankly to nearly any nonprofit that um, has a, a dedicated constituent base as hospitals and, and higher ed institutions have. Um, you know, I think the things that perhaps are the places to really focus your energy are around three areas that we've talked about today. Um, one is, you know, who is the target of your outreach? Um, and that might be driven by the goal that you set, or that may just be driven by um, the nature of, of what you decide to build your campaign focus around. And what I mean by that is, if, for example, you decide that your Giving Tuesday campaign as a hospital is going to be focused on children's services, just to use an example, then you clearly would have certain targets from your list that are likely to be the targets that are going to be most moved by supporting a children's services initiative within your hospital. So I would say the sort of first things first would be to think about what you want to try to accomplish on Giving Tuesday. Who are those target constituents that would be the highest priority um, people to tap to engage in the campaign? Then I think many of the things that we've talked about today really flow out of that. Um, I think the other thing that I would mention just as somebody coming out of a, a, you know, a software background um, with a crowdfunding site is that many universities are a little further ahead of the hospitals in terms of having software that's capable of handling the kind of online giving that, um, that takes place on a, on a giving day or on Giving Tuesday. So the other building block I think that many hospitals need to put in place is the either a partnership with an existing site that they can deploy for Giving Tuesday or just to be sure that their own software has the capability to um to allow for you know a progress bar and and some updating and some goals. It doesn't have to be super sophisticated, particularly if you're a smaller institution, but you do want a couple of, of bits of functionality that will, you know, give the visual um um, look at your campaign that people can follow through the course of the day and kind of see how things are going. And I'd be happy offline to share with you a number of software uh, companies that you could reach out to if that was something you were interested in exploring. But that would be one building block I think a lot of hospitals would need to put in place because many of them haven't really um, engaged in crowdfunding in the same way that the higher ed institutions have. Okay, next question. Um, did you allow donors to make pledges for Giving Tuesday, or did you only take credit card gifts? 
We took credit card gifts online. In terms of any major gifts, we did um, not require that the entire process be completed prior to then if we had a firm commitment. Um, at that point in time, our online recurring gifts um, pledges were not working, so it really was actually giving on the day of Giving Blue Day. The vast majority of the giving came through our online giving engine, but we did have uh, people giving through the phone credit card gifts through our, our student call center. There were a few different places where we were manually um, adding the totals into our, our counter because they weren't part of our online giving platform. Okay. Um, and, and there are actually, um, there's some pretty simple functionality that's out there if you do want to um, to get people to be able to pledge ahead of time for Giving Tuesday. That can be one of the things that can be a source of excitement building in that month lead up um, is there are a number of, of those off-the-shelf software partners who offer a pledge functionality that would let people pledge, put their credit card in, you know, three weeks ahead of time and it wouldn't run until Giving Tuesday so that it's still it's still happening on that day. Um, but that is something that if you feel pledging is important to your constituent um, to be able to do that, that is something that, um, you know, there are some software capabilities to provide or through your own system um, if you're allowing future pre pledges, so people to pledge on Giving Tuesday for a future gift. Um, you know that's something that many of your of your probably current uh, donor management software um, providers allow. Great, thank you. Um, and I, I believe we've addressed this already, but maybe if you could sum in like three bullet points. If you're a smaller institution with limited staff. You know, what are the top three things that you should be thinking about to plan maybe your first giving day? And I, I would think to be very focused. Who are you trying to appeal to? What are you trying to accomplish? And then you know, keep it as simple and straightforward as possible. Our situation. Yeah, and I because of I'm the sorry. scale of the university, which is very complex. But I think it's entirely possible to do a more focused, smaller scale giving day, just focusing on a particular audience and a particular cause. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree. I, you know, I would think about, um, for those of you that are in small organizations, um, you know, I think that the couple of key things really are, you know, to have a lead organizer who has the credibility within the broader institution to rally people around doing something like this, I think that's one of the most critical things. You don't want to be fighting an uphill battle internally. Um, so, if, so building support among you know colleagues and um, and administration, I think, is very important. I think that you can put your toe in the water with one of those campaign ideas on the slide. Um, toward the end of my presentation where there are some big ideas, but then there's also some very small and tactical ideas. I think that would be my second recommendation is to, um, to define something that you feel like you can manage in year one with the team that you have. Um, and then the third thing I think is to be sure that, um, that you create a great experience for the people that do donate so that you're building that excitement, you're building that sense that they will, you know, be sharing on Giving Tuesday on your behalf because they've had such a great experience going through the process, and that then you are sort of building that that foundation of um, or laying the groundwork for a Giving Tuesday 2016 campaign when you can stretch a little further. Um, there's a lot more, you know, sort of basic building blocks that um, if you want to refer to, we, we did a, a webinar with the Maryland team um, a couple weeks back, maybe longer than that, Allison, now it's hard to remember, that has a lot of the basics of, you know, building a story and that kind of thing, and we certainly could also share some of that information, which is perhaps more applicable to some smaller organizations. 
sure. And that content is available at MarylandGivesMore.com on the Nonprofit Toolkit page. There's a whole recording of that webinar. Um, so it is 5 o'clock on the dot, and we have responded to all of the questions submitted through the chat window. So congratulations to us for being so efficient, <laughs> and congratulations <laughs> to our uh, participants for really engaging and listening. Um, this was excellent content. Um, again, yeah, I Allison, like thank you for terrific moderation. You're thank welcome. You. <laughs> Yes, thanks, Jamie and Linda, for sharing your expertise. Um, as I said at the beginning, we'll be recording this webinar. It will be available on givingtuesday.org sometime later this week. Thank you, everyone, for, uh, for participating, and, um, and good luck on Giving Tuesday 2015. Thanks very thank much. Thank you.